Well, my name's Dave Feasy. Uh, I've been involved in learning and development for the last 15 years, and over the course of that time, I've been involved in a number of different roles within learning and development. I've been an instructor, I've been a training writer, I've been an e-learning developer, a consultant, uh, an LMS manager, solutions architect, and a business director. So with that breadth of experience, uh, I'm always interested in seeing how learning and development impacts the business. So my background, actually my training, is in uh, the visual arts, fine art, graphic design, illustration. Uh, but I found after I got out of school that I also was a pretty good programmer and have a good analytical mind as well as a creative mind. And so bringing those two things together uh, in that space is design um, that's got both an analytical component and a creative component. So knowledge design is about bringing those tools, methodologies, observations from the design uh, discipline into learning and development. And, um, you know, organizational learning and organizational knowledge is not something that happens spontaneously. It has to be created, it has to be built, it has to be designed. And so um, one of the things uh, that's crucial to that is understanding the problem space. And this is where uh, business uh, analysis, needs analysis, and requirements gathering comes in because um, often the problems in business are are not well defined. Information is missing or it's difficult to talk to, uh, to gather all the information from all the different viewpoints that would give you a concrete problem space. So we're often working with less than ideal problem definition. Well, I think there's no one size fits all solution because uh, knowledge design problems are multivariate and uh, there are a lot of uh, different aspects and you know one solution that may work in one situation is not necessarily going to work in another situation so um, and because the problem space is often poorly defined what I find myself often doing although this is not always the solution is uh, rapid prototyping so I think it's important to get uh, an idea or get a solution or something that that's actually functional in front of people uh, for them to be able to see how is this actually going to work. And that starts to uh, surface some of the unstated assumptions um, and, and better define the problem space so that the uh, iterating on that, the next solution will be better and uh, the problem space then gets better defined and you understand your business better. The biggest challenges are also the biggest opportunities. So um, two of those that I see, one is the, uh, again, demonstrating the value that learning and development has on the business. Now, because it's a multivariate uh, situation where learning and development produces a lot of different outputs, uh, both behavior uh, in terms of morale, uh, and the business is driven by a number of different factors which may or may not be impacted by learning. It's very difficult to tease out and uh, I guess you'd have to do like a very complex statistical analysis, regression analysis to find out exactly what learning's contribution is to, to the bottom line of the business. But we intuitively know that learning and development has a positive uh, has positive effects and I think as learning and development professionals we need to do a better job of telling that story. So the other challenge and opportunity is obviously has to do with technology and how fast everything is changing um, whether that's uh, mobile learning, uh, social media, cloud computing, uh, the Internet of Everything, the ubiquitous uh, connection, uh, tablets, new OSs, the app ecosystem, all that stuff uh, is driving the need for shorter and shorter uh, development cycles for training. So we have to become faster at what we're doing. Uh, there's no such thing, I believe, as an 18-month 
uh, training development cycle anymore. So one of the things I've been most interested in over the last couple of years, and I mentioned it, is social media and how social media impacts learning and development and how we can use those tools effectively for learning and development. I think there's still a little bit of a belief that if you build it, they will come. And uh, that's not been my experience. I think there's opportunities there for sharing expertise. Um, but the key drivers to, to make that successful from what I've seen so far include things like um, really coming up with useful uh, cases uh, for using social media as opposed to some other tool. We got to make it easier for people to do their jobs. Um, and the other is uh, just incentives in general. You know, um, if reputation on a social media site for, say, technical knowledge uh, is tied into somebody's performance uh, review, that's obviously going to drive a lot more adoption and drive participation. And, and really sort of um, uh, supercharge that type of initiative.